Hi everybody, Dave Thomas here again, and today I'm going to be assembling the Estes Astracam rocket. Unlike the camera rockets of decades past, this one goes together fairly easily. As with any kit, we want to check and make sure we have all the parts before we get started. This kit does not require any glue or cement or anything like that, nor does it require any paint. Although there are a couple of steps here where you might want to put just a little bit of white glue or wood glue in a few places just to keep things reinforced. But this whole kit is actually meant to snap together. All of the parts come in uh, three sub-assemblies here and then we simply have the body tube and the self-stick decal. Okay, This package contains the fin can and the nose cone. This package contains the fins, the shock cord, and the parachute, as well as a whole bunch of rubber bands for attaching the camera. And then finally the Astrocam camera itself comes in its own package here. So we'll start with the fin can. And this is meant to simply pop together, so put the pegs into the corresponding holes, and then that just pops together like that. Now if you are of the mind to, you could use a little bit of plastic model cement to hold this together, but I am just going to assemble it here as the instructions show. Okay, once this is together, we can open up the fins. And there are two red fins and one black. And each of these simply um, pushes into the slot here and then is pushed forward. And we just repeat this for each fin. It doesn't matter which color goes where. And then this slides into this end of the body tube. It has two small slots in it, and those correspond to these two tabs here. So I'm just going to slide that on. Uh, if you need to, you might want to push in a little bit on the tabs to get them started. And then they will pop into place on those slots. And then the motor retainer simply screws on here. And this just helps keep everything together, even if you don't have the motor in place. Our next task is to install the shock cord mount. This comes in two small pieces here, and this is in the same package with the uh, fin cam. And so this part here the rounded edge faces up and goes into this hole. And before I put that on, I'm going to show you just how the other part. The other part is going to slide on here like this. And it will snap into place. So now I have to unsnap it here. But that's what will hold this on. And this is another uh, place if you wanted to you could apply a little bit of plastic cement right, but again I'm going to put this on okay and then there is some curvature to this so you want the curved face to be facing the inside of the tube and you can't see this here so you have to kind of go by what it shows uh, and feel your way to put that on to the end I just showed you. There we go. Okay, you want to make sure that clicks fully into place there. And so now we have um, an inlet here into the tube. And this is where the shock cord is going to attach. So for this part, we'll take the shock cord out.
and we're simply going to feed this into the hole inside. And then we can grab that and pull it through. Okay, we're going to pull it all the way through, almost to the edge here. Um, and now we simply tie a double knot into the cord and then pull it up against the interior of that mount. Okay, and then I'm just going to pull this in. And so that should wedge itself. No, it needs a little bit more. All right, we may need a larger knot. So if yours pulls through too easily there, just tie another knot on top of that. And once more, I'm going to have to feed this through. Try this again. See now, there's a lot of room in there actually. And this is one of those places uh, I was mentioning that you might actually want to use some glue to hold this knot in. Is it get a really big knot going there? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to apply a little bit of wood glue here. Um, white glue would work fine too. You don't want to use super glue as it can degrade the rubber. And I'm going to carefully push that back in. And I'm not worrying about that little piece of rubber sticking up right now. I will trim that after the glue is dried. Now this next part is kind of unique to this kit. Here's our nose cone. It is all pre-assembled, pre-glued together. And then there's a, a piece of nylon cord that's included here. It's not very long. And so one end of this goes into the end of the nose cone. And here you're going to tie this on with a double knot. Make sure that's good and snug there. Um, you want to leave a little bit of free end here, although we can trim a little bit of that off. But if you trim it right up next to the knot, it may pull through. And this is actually another good place to put another just little tiny dab of wood glue there. And I'm just going to work that into the knot. And that'll just help keep that knot from unraveling at an inopportune time. And then the other end of this we simply tie a loop into using an overhand fishing knot. Also called a water knot. And this does not need to be a big loop. Um, the size kind of depends on your fingers. There we go. I'm just going to use the handle of my hobby knife here to allow me to pull on that grater. Okay, and here again, this is a good place just to put a little tiny dab of glue. Okay. Just enough to work that in. Right, next we need the parachute. Parachute's pre-assembled. You simply have to take out the uh, shroud lines here and make sure they're all untangled.
Now if you've seen my other rocketry videos, I always put a snap swivel in here. Okay, and this is going to be no different than that. So if you're not using a snap swivel to attach your parachute, um, you simply uh, take all the shroud lines, loop them through the loop that you put on the end of this nylon line, and then pass the entire parachute through that loop. And what that will do then is make the parachute hang the nose cone like this. So in most rockets the parachute's attached to the base of the nose cone causing it to hang this way. And the idea behind this is this allows the camera to be viewing the ground during the descent instead of looking up into the sky which is probably going to be really boring during the descent. So I'm going to put a snap swivel on my parachute and the first thing I'm doing here is simply gathering the chute at its middle and then pulling all the shroud lines taut. It looks like we've got one set that's just a little bit longer than the others, but it should be fine that way. So I'm holding all of the lines here. I'm just going to draw that into a bunch. Here's my snap swivel, and I'm just going to put that assembly of loops here through the swivel end. I'm going to open up those loops again, and I'm going to pass the entire snap swivel through the loops, and then bring those back down. And they will then grab onto the loop there. Uh, once more, I'm going to put just a little bit of glue on top of that, just to keep those shroud lines from moving. Okay, so now I can attach this or detach it. So when I'm ready to attach it, I just attach this part here onto the loops. And now the parachute will descend with the nose cone aimed upward and the camera, which will be in here, aimed downward. And then we take the other end of our shock cord and simply tie it onto the base of the nose cone. Again with a double knot. And leave yourself a little bit of a free end there. And then when we pull this in both directions, it doesn't pull itself loose. Okay, and just a little bit more glue here. Just to hold that knot in place. And when I'm ready to assemble the whole thing, I'll cut off the, the little bits of free end here that we need to. Okay, so that is the assembly itself. Now the last part of the building part of this is simply to add the decal here. Uh, it is a single self-stick decal and as you can see here it's meant to go along the length of the rocket. So somewhere along here. Placement is up to you. Uh, they do also suggest adding some clear tape around the base here to help reinforce this. Um, I would suggest using clear packaging tape, uh, the kind that's about two inches long and tends to stick to itself a lot, rather than say uh, transparent tape or cellophane tape or something like that. Uh, it's going to be a lot stronger and even uh, though the, the two inches seems really big, that will give you a really wide reinforced area here. And so you want to overlap the plastic part here so that the edge of the tape is right along the fins and then the rest of it will extend up into here. I'm going to do that later. I don't have any packaging tape with me, but this is a good idea. Uh, it will fly without it though. So if you don't have any tape handy and you don't want to have to go out and buy some tape just for this rocket, you should be fine without it. All right, our last piece here is the camera and this is it. It doesn't look very remarkable. Um, the little hole in one end here is the actual camera lens. And then it's got a power button here on the side. And if we pull this off, this is where um, we insert this into the computer, both to charge it and then also to um, download the camera. 
on the side right here, this is a micro SD card, and you can simply use a fingernail uh, or the curved edge of a paper clip and just push that in to remove it, and it'll come back out. So this comes with a 16 gigabyte card, and that should give you uh, lots and lots of camera footage, probably more than you'd actually do in a day. All right, and then you just push that back in. If it doesn't go in easily, then turn it around. You've got it in upside down. Okay. So the first thing you need to do, and I need to do this as well, is to go charge this by plugging it into either a computer or into a 5-volt USB charger port. And according to the instructions, a full charge will take two to three hours. Once the camera has been charged, then you simply turn it on by holding the button down and the blue light there will come on. And then this mounts into the nose cone. So the, the USB port fits inside here and the whole thing just rests in the notch. And then the little rubber bands that came with it um, you want to save these and have extras. And so this simply snaps into place on one side of the nose cone, stretches across to the other. And you can see through this little hole in the side the indicator light there. And so to begin filming, you simply press this once. And as this is blinking, it is filming whatever's going on. And so, presumably, you're going to have this all assembled on the launch pad before you press that button. And then to turn the camera off again, simply press the button once more. Blue light comes on. And then press and hold to turn it off. To see what you filmed, you can simply plug this into a USB port on your computer and either view it directly or download the file. And the details are all in the instructions here for the camera itself. Um, I would highly recommend going through this. Experiment a little bit with the camera before you actually go to launch it. And with that, I'm going to call this finished. Have a good flight, a safe recovery, and I'll see you next time.